What's up, y'all? Let's talk about optimizing your diet for recovery. Now, this is huge because I'm going to talk about something uh, besides calories and protein and carbs and fat, right? Because everybody talks about that, right? You got to get in enough calories. You got to get in enough protein. You got to get in enough carbs. You got to get in enough fat, right? Of course, the right types of fat. We know this, right? And you can pretty much do any kind of Google search or look up any type of fitness YouTuber who will tell you this. <clears throat> but, of course, getting the results that you're looking for is a little bit more nuanced than that, right? Because food choice uh, is very intricate and there's a lot of things that you can overlook. Now, being that if you're following my five categories of food, it's much less likely that you'll make this mistake. But... I'm going to talk in particular about some things that you can do, very simple things that you can do, and all you need is something like a juicer. Now, before I get into juice, I'm going to talk about what I mean with the emphasis of recovery. Now, in regards to things like healing from chronic illnesses, or even just slight illnesses, or building muscle, or burning body fat, right? These things are very energy intensive things. Healing is very energy intensive building muscle is very energy intensive this is why if you are trying to build muscle you're going through a lean bulking cycle right you got to be in a calorie surplus right you have to have a protein surplus right which is really a nitrogen surplus right and of course you got to have those carbohydrates up there because those carbohydrates enact with your insulin and all of that type of stuff to shuttle all the nutrients that you need into your cells in order to create a good environment in your body, right, in order to facilitate things like muscle building, right, and fat loss. And even fat loss is uh, tremendously energy intensive, right, because we're talking about mobilizing fat and breaking it down and using it for energy. Your body requires energy to even tap into that energy, okay? So, in regards to recovery, now let's let's put together a scene. Let's say um, we got a number line, and here on the number line we have negative ten, and then right in the middle we have a zero, and then all the way on the opposite side we have positive ten. Now, let's say you're feeling fresh, you're feeling good. This is right before you hit the gym and train. You're at let's say a zero. When you go and you train, you put yourself into a deficit, right? You go into the negative because you're breaking down muscle fibers. You're breaking down those proteins when you're lifting heavy and training hard in the gym. You're beating your body up. You're causing some wear and tear. You got to recover from that. Okay. So basically, you need to at least recover and get to a zero at the bare minimum. If you're not even getting to that baseline of zero, you're actually losing muscle. Okay, and then you're gonna create inflammation that starts to become chronic when you do this habitually. And there's a lot of people who their recovery is just not matching their efforts in the gym, and this is often why people don't see results. But we don't just want to recover to zero, we want to go into the positive, right? Because we want to recover all the way to baseline, but then we also want to go all the way into the positive and try to build as much as we can. Now, muscle building does not happen in the gym. It happens during recovery, right? When you sleep at night in particular. So does the fat loss. Now, there are workouts that you can do that might encourage your body to tap into your fat stores more than others. For example, if you're doing, let's say, a body part split, focusing on a lot of isolation exercises. This is not really going to encourage your body to burn a whole lot of body fat, but if you're doing a full body training routine, where you're doing all compound lifts and things like that and your heart is really racing, this is going to require more energy and this is going to provoke your body to tap into your fat stores more, right? So that would be a training tip to drop body fat, but really you're going to burn the most body fat after the workout, right? During the recovery phase and you're going to be burning the most body fat at rest when your body is doing all the work in order to recover. And so protein and carbs and calories aside, we need to be, we need to make sure that we're actually combating and reducing inflammation, right? Reducing any kind of dis-ease or illness of the body, right? And so if you 
deal with things like bloating and gas and water retention. All of these are signs of inflammation, right? That your body is battling something. Now understand, life can be a bit of a war zone, right? So we're always battling something. We're battling mental and emotional stress. We go to the gym, we're battling the weights. We're, bas we're battling physical stress, right? Physical breakdown of the body, wear and tear, right? You go to work, maybe you deal with people you don't like. This causes you emotional stress or at least agitation, right? And then let's say you come home and your home is cluttered or whatever the case is, and this may create some type of mental confusion, foggy headedness, things like that, that also in turn negatively impact your sleep. People deal with anxiety, depression, all of this kind of stuff. Maybe you have uh, gut illnesses. So you're dealing with stress of all kinds on a daily basis. So you don't just need to recover from the workout, you also need to recover from the day-to-day -day life. You gotta wake up tomorrow ready to go. You gotta wake up supercharged, right? You gotta get into the positive because the day can be very draining. So aside from a calorie surplus and a protein and a carb surplus, we gotta get a nutrient surplus, a surplus of antioxidants, a surplus of vitamins and minerals and the right types of vitamins and minerals that most people lack in their diet. So let's get into something simple like celery juice. Now you can get a few stalks of celery, right? Let's say get yourself three or four servings of celery and you can juice that and get yourself, you know, 12, 16, maybe even 20 ounces uh, of juice. Now, celery is very bitter, doesn't taste very good to most people, but bitter is highly medicinal. It's a good sign that a food is, is loaded in medicinal properties, okay? Celery is high in just pretty much everything, right? In particular, vitamin K, which improves bone density, okay? It, you know, celery improves uh, blood flow and blood clotting and things like this. Celery can reverse illnesses like IBS, right? Bloating issues, water retention, right? Celery acts as a diuretic, purging toxins and water from the body. Celery is filled with certain types of fiber that feed your good gut bacteria that defend your gut. Okay, celery combats and reverses things like eczema, acne, right, severe or minor, right? There's all kinds of things that this, that, that this combats, right? Celery is a huge, major deal. It's a very good food to eat, okay? Um, because of all of its anti-inflammatory anti uh, properties. Now, in this juice, you would also add things like a Granny Smith apple, right? So throw in a little bit of sweetness, but get some natural sugar in there, okay? And Granny Smith apples are loaded with vitamin C, which is very good for repairing uh, tissue in general, whether it be your gut lining, muscle fiber, your skin, whatever the case is, producing collagen elastin. Vitamin C is very important for this. So you're gonna be getting that in the celery and you're also gonna be getting that in that Granny Smith apple, plus with a little bit of sweetness to combat the bitterness. Now you can also put in some squeezed key lime or just lime in general in there, like a tablespoon of lime juice in, in, in this juice. You can add that for a little bit of kick, nice flavoring, fruity flavoring to it, and it complements the apple quite well, right? With that citrusy flavor. Now, in addition to that, you can also add ginger, okay? Ginger by itself may not taste so good, but ginger also is extremely anti-inflammatory and very good for reversing gut health illnesses and things like that. And all of these foods combined, they don't just heal the gut, they also improve blood quality, blood flow, oxygenation of blood, heart health, you name it, all of this type of stuff. So you get like 12, 16, or 20 ounces at a time of this stuff. I would recommend more so at the higher range, 16 to 20 ounces. And you're getting this stuff on a daily basis. This is going to drastically improve your recovery and your sleep quality and all of that kind of stuff. So a juicer, if you don't have one, get one. It's a very good investment, especially 
if you're following a plant-based diet. So I'm gonna pretty much end it there and uh, take advantage of this, okay? Trust me, do it for 30 days and really watch how your body changes. And I would invite you to document the changes and reach out and share with me, right? Let me know how it worked for you, what it did for you.